I think the more and more people are wanting to learn a traditional skill, a skill where they can grow their own materials, where they can source their materials from nature. It's not just that you've got a skill, it's also peace of mind. I, I can't function as a person without keeping my creative flow going, keeping my hands busy. When my hands are busy, my mind's not chattering. As a child, I was always either drawing or making things. My nana taught me how to sew. So it's always been there, that making side. I ended up being a craft teacher for the Steiner schools, teaching sewing skills, dressmaking, baskets, candle making, bits of pottery, all different things. I was 15 years teaching in a Steiner school and I thought, what do I really want to do? I didn't want to teach anymore. I wanted to do something else. I thought, I'm just gonna set up on my own. So I moved on to the farm and set up on a wee corner of this barn and one thing just led to another. So we're in the pole barn, our workshop, and in here we have willow weaving, the making of baskets. What I really love is the sourcing of local materials. So we take it right back to the beginning. Um, so growing the willow, processing it, drying it, and then the making. I'm very lucky that this field's got a, a burn on two sides of the field. So this, this part of the, the field is a very wet, wet field and Willow really likes wet conditions. So it seems to thrive wonderfully. So once the Willow's been cut from the bed, we'll end up with piles out here. And we have to put, put bundles in this blue barrel and we take the tallest ones and we grade it into length um, because some baskets when as basket makers we want to go to a bundle that's got all the same length and similar thicknesses and just tie them up and then they're ready just to go in the lean-to of the barn to dry and it'll stay in there for about four months and then it's completely dry Basket making has not just got a traditional element, it, has, it certainly does have an art form as the rods are so pliable you can bend and twist and, and create an object out of nothing. It's all hands, yeah, that's the beauty about it. All we have is a, a knife, a beater and a pair of secateurs and a bodkin. Those are our tools and then our hands do the work. So right now Lisa's um, pricking down the border here at the top of this backpack. So there's different um, weaves that you can do for that. So this, she's probably doing three down behind one, maybe, weave. You can go th four down behind two, five down behind one. There's French randing, there's English randing. There's all lots of different techniques and every country has different varieties. It's endless learning and I don't think we'll ever stop learning on that one, yeah. So what happens is we make a willow bed, a willow tray, carrying tray, so the body goes on the carrying tray. The body gets wrapped up in a calico cloth with a liner in to make it waterproof and then we felt a big blanket that gets, the body then gets wrapped up in a big felted blanket. People have come in uh, to help make their uh, family member's coffin or a shroud. Um, there was one mother and daughter that came in. The daughter was dying. She came in with her wheelchair and they stayed here. They were here for four days and they made the daughter's shroud. It was like they were preparing for a wedding. It was so moving. There was tears, there was laughter um, on both sides with me too, tears and laughter. And they, cre they created this beautiful shroud that she was gonna be buried in. When they came in, they had this heaviness about them they were sad, but by the time they left, there was, it, the energy had changed. They were much happier together. They'd, they'd kind of grown and loved the process that they were doing. So to, for them to take, take it right back to the beginning, the raw fleece by the end of it, a beautiful blanket, and she, they stitched their heart into it. They stitched their sadness into the blanket and they came out and they were happy together afterwards. It was lovely to see.
There seems to be a more and more interest in people learning hands-on skill again. We've lost those creative skills. A lot of people don't even know how to sew a button on, which I find really sad. So it's, it is fantastic that people are coming back to traditional skills.